I'm Hayley and welcome to this week's instalment of What's in the Night Sky. This week the planets will be putting on quite a show in the early hours of the morning and there might even be a chance to spot the elusive Neptune. I'll talk about how to spot the moon's famous Tycho crater and how you can enhance your view using binoculars. Our constellation of the week this week is Ursa Minor, home of the Pole Star. Let's begin by having a look at what the planets are up to this week. You'll see I've started on Monday the 8th at around half past 10 and I'm just going to move time onwards a bit until we get to the early hours of Tuesday morning. And you'll see that the Moon, Saturn and Jupiter are all rising together in a triangle shape. So if you're up late enough, it should be quite a spectacular sight. You'll see that the Moon is a gibbous phase and just above it we've got Saturn on the left and Jupiter on the right. You could have a go at spotting the Tycho Crater on the Moon. I'm going to talk more about the Tycho Crater in a few minutes. If you have a pair of binoculars you could have a go at spotting Jupiter's four Galilean moons. And if you have a small telescope you could try making out some of the surface features on Jupiter, such as its north and south equatorial cloud bands. And again, if you have a small telescope, let's have a look at Saturn. You could have a go at looking at Saturn's rings and spotting its large moon Titan. And the best time for viewing this little grouping is going to be around 2am on Tuesday the 9th of June. If we move onwards now to Saturday, the early hours of Saturday the 13th, and you'll see that the Moon has left Saturn and Jupiter behind and is paying a visit to Mars. So another little alignment of Moon and planet for you to look out for. This one will be a bit trickier to spot because it's quite low to the horizon and it won't get very high before the sun rises. So around 3am is going to be the best sort of time to view this. Let's take us to 3am. And you'll see that the moon now is half illuminated and you should be able to also see Mars's orangey red glow with your naked eye. If you fancy a bit of a challenge, if we look to the north of Mars, you'll see that Neptune is hiding now Neptune is definitely not a naked eye object. You will need a pair of binoculars or a telescope to spot Neptune. If you do have a pair of binoculars, the best way to try and find Neptune is to use Mars as a signpost. So we know that Mars appears above the moon. We know that it's nice and bright. It has an orangey color. Shouldn't be too difficult to spot. And then you can use that as a stepping stone to try and find Neptune. And with a pair of binoculars, Neptune will appear as a pinprick of light. If you have a small telescope, then you might be able to make out that Neptune has got a bluish disk. Let's have a look at the moon in a bit more detail now. And the moon doesn't rise until after midnight on Monday, and it rises later as we go through the week. So you're less likely to spot the moon this week unless you are a bit of a night owl. If we zoom in and go to the beginning of the week, you'll see that we start the week at a gibbous phase and waning towards last quarter at the end of the week. This week, why not have a go at spotting the moon's famous Tycho crater? If we go back to Monday, I'm just going to put my mouse on the Tycho crater for you while I talk about it. And it is arguably the most spectacular of all the lunar craters. 
it's really bright and it has a dramatic ray system of ejected material that was thrown out across the surface at the time of impact and you can see those rays as these bright streaks that extend outwards from the crater. It's also, if you are a science fiction fan, it's home to the alien monolith in 2001 A Space Odyssey. And it isn't one of the biggest craters on the moon. It's only 53 miles across. And the reason it looks so spectacular is because it's very young. And that's also the reason why you can still see these bright rays of ejected material. If you are wanting to appreciate the rays, the best time to do that is when the moon is close to full. So look for those at the start of the week and they span a huge distance across the lunar surface and some of them reach up as far as the Sea of Serenity, so all the way up here. Um, and the Sea of Serenity is interesting because it was the site of the Apollo 17 lunar mission and they were actually able to pick up a sample of rock from the rays and that was used to calculate Tycho's age. So we know that Tycho is only about 108 million years old which sounds really old, but actually for a lunar crater that is very young. With the naked eye, let's just take our mouse back down to Tycho. With the naked eye, Tycho will appear as a bright spot on the surface. Um, but if you have a pair of binoculars, then it really does come to life. And it's one of my favourite things to look at with a pair of binoculars. The crater itself with a pair of binoculars, you should be able to see that it has a central mountain of material that fell back into the crater after the impact. So you can have a go at looking for that. If you have a small telescope, then you might be able to see that there's actually a second central mountain as well, um, a smaller one. And the other thing that you can try and spot with a pair of binoculars is that Tycho has a stepped or a terraced rim around it um, and that formed as the sides of the crater gave way under gravity sometime after the impact. If you're wanting to have a look at the crater itself and you're trying to spot the central peaks and look at the terracing around the edge, then the best time to do that is around the time that the crater is on the terminator and that will be towards the end of the week, so Saturday or Sunday. And the reason that you want to look at the crater when it is near the Terminator is because the shadows that are cast at those times will highlight those features that you're trying to look for. Um, and some of the features that you'll be able to see at this time would be lost when the crater is in full sun. Let's finish by looking at our constellation of the week for this week, which is Ursa Minor, or the Little Bear. And you can see if we locate Ursa Major and the Big Dipper, above Ursa Major is Ursa Minor and the stars of Ursa Minor form a Little Dipper. So you've got a Big Dipper and a Little Dipper. And Ursa Minor is special because it's home to Polaris or the North Star or Pole Star. Um, and Polaris is the closest star to the North Celestial Pole. And that means that it remains in almost the same position all the time with all of the other stars appearing to rotate around it. And if we speed up time, we can see that effect. So keep an eye on the pole star and just watch as we speed up time and you can see that Polaris is not really moving and all of the other stars are appearing to rotate around it and that's been important for navigation because it can be used to find north and it can also be used to find the observer's latitude and sailors relied on the pole star for navigation for many years before modern instruments were invented. Let's stop that now. And there are various stories about the pole star in mythology. In Norse mythology, it was known as the jewel on the end of the spike that the gods stuck through the universe and around which the sky revolves. The Navajo people refer to it as the fire star and in Mongolian mythology, it was the peg holding the world together. And the best way to find the pole star and Ursa Minor is to use 
Ursa Major or the Big Dipper as a signpost. So just like we used the Big Dipper last week to find Arcturus, we're going to use the Big Dipper again this week to find Polaris. And the way to do that is to look at these two bright stars at the end of the pan and use them to draw an imaginary line. So draw an imaginary line connecting these two stars and extend it upwards into the sky and you should reach Polaris. If you want to see the rest of the stars in the Little Dipper, then um, you will need a fairly dark location um, because they are quite faint. And that brings me to the end of our night sky tour for this week and I'll be back again next week.